I'm going to change some of the visuals on these roots and end effectors and while I'm doing that I'm also going to collect them into groups so I can easily hide and unhide them and just access them very quickly. At the right side of the main command panel at the top uh, underneath the select uh, category of tools I can use a filter to mask out certain objects so if I wanted to mask out chain roots, effectors, or bones I can do so. So when it comes to chain roots if I uh, press Control A with the filter selected it only selects the root objects and if I press enter they all share the same properties root objects so I can change their visual attributes all at the same time rather than displaying them as nulls I like to display them as a set of rings and size the attribute down a little bit maybe something like that I can then take all 15 of those objects if I need to recall them again and make a group out of them or control G. So if I click on that group, I'm going to call this the chain root group. And the nice thing about groups is when you need to select the contents of a group, you can just right click on the group and select the members that belong to that group. I'll then set the filter to effector. Grab all my effectors. I can first of all change their visual icon and the visual icon I'll use for effectors typically will be just really small boxes. I'll just size those down and group them for easy access. So there's the chain effector group and I'll also grab all of my deformers because eventually I'm going to want to uh, assign them to the geometry as an envelope. So if I grab all of my bone elements, I can group the bones quickly as well. I always press the object mode to get out of the filters, otherwise you're only stuck selecting objects of the specific filter type. Before we mirror everything over to the other side, it's probably a good idea to parent all these pieces. We have a lot of loose elements in here, but fortunately parenting is very simple to do. Uh, I'm going to use the schematic window to help me out here. And I'm going to start off by kind of just trucking in, making, maybe making this window a little longer and moving this explorer up, up a hair. So one of the neat things about navigating around in the uh, schematic window is that you can use a lot of the same tools that you would use in XSI, the, the translate tool to move objects, or you can use the M tool uh, to just interactively click and drag objects with a left mouse button, M and middle click and drag to move entire hierarchies. And to create uh, parent-child relationships, you have to start in the schematic window by selecting a child and alt drag and dropping it onto the parent. And typically in XSI we'll take the root elements and make them children of the effector. So take the beginning of a chain and make it the child of the end of a chain. So I can see all of my digits here. So there's the left index root, the left middle root, the left ring root, and the left pinky root. And what I want to do with those four elements there, you can see them in my uh, 3D viewport is I'm going to make those follow the end effector of the palm. Basically by moving this end effector I'd want these four digits to move. So uh, I can just hold down Alt. First of all I might actually want to middle click and drag over top of those four elements and just translate those elements uh, down into place. I'll also take the thumb middle click and drag as well. So the pinky roots, alt, drag and drop onto the effector, the left ring root, alt, drag and drop, left middle root, and the left index root. Those are very easy to sort out. Now, As far as the thumb goes, you can see that the thumb sits at a very different location. It sits deeper into the palm, so that this actual palm bone here makes a pretty good candidate for the parent of the thumb's root. So I'll alt, drag and drop onto that. Notice I'm not using the second palm bone because that's further ahead and that's actually just used for my finger curling whereas this palm root or palm bone is used to move the whole hand. So there's my first hierarchy of all the hand pieces 
and it's going to fit into this whole arm hierarchy. So we have the hierarchy of the ulna radius and the hierarchy of the arm, the bicep and the forearm. I'm going to take the left ulna root and make it a child of the left arm effector by just taking the ulna root, alt drag and dropping it onto the arms effector. And then I'll take the ulna radii effector and make it the parent of the palms root. Alt drag and drop the palm root onto the ulna radii effector. So if I take that and rotate it, I can rotate the entire hand and this is eventually going to be the control that helps to distribute the arm twist up the arm to the bicep. So this is one of the largest hierarchies, the hierarchy of the arm and hands, and we're going to add to it the hierarchy of the shoulder. So the shoulder hierarchy controls the arm hierarchy, so if I move this up higher in the stack, I'm going to be taking the left arm root and making it a child of the left shoulder effector, so alt drag and drop there. Now you can see we've got a few more hierarchies to sort out here. So I've pretty much taken care of the left arm and I'm going to need to find a way to parent it to this uh, spine rig here. And if you remember, the top element, the top vertebra on the spine, makes a better candidate uh, for parent than the control does because the control can pull away from the spine. So I'm going to take the hierarchy of the rib cage, which is sitting over here, move that over using the translate tool, and I'll take the root of that element and make it a child of the vertebra. So a rib root is a child of the first vertebra. And the shoulder root can come off of that that end effector, much like the neck root can as well too. So I'll just middle click on this uh, shoulder hierarchy and just drag it down here. And see if we can't find the neck and head root. There it is there. So let's move that over. Actually first what we can do is just take the jaw and add it in as well. Save ourselves a little bit of work. I'll actually just take the head bone in this case and I'd want the head bone to control the rotation of the jaw, so we'll take the jaw root and just alt drag and drop it right onto the head bone. And I'll middle click on the head root to branch select it and move it over a little bit more. And now what I can do is take both the head and neck root and the shoulder root and make them children of this rib effector here. Because again, if I move that effector or I move the bone, I'd want to pull the neck and head chain and the shoulder chain for the ride. So uh, let's take the effector, uh, the shoulder root, alt drag and drop onto the rib effector, take the neck and head root, alt drag and drop onto the rib effector there as well. So our hierarchy is looking a little bit more complex. And now we just have to deal with two more hierarchies. And these are the hierarchies of the leg and foot. So with the leg, we'd want to take the end of the leg and make it the parent of the beginning of the foot chain. So I'm going to alt, drag and drop the left foot root onto the left leg effector. And when it comes to the pelvis, I want the tilt of the pelvis to drive the height of the leg on either side. So I'll take the bone or the effector of the pelvis. I'll take the leg root and alt drag and drop it onto the pelvis's effector. So I have two hierarchies going on and we now need to determine which of the two hierarchies is going to control the other. Is the pelvis root hierarchy going to control the spine hierarchy with uh, that transform group null acting as the parent there? And, and typically in most characters the pelvis root is the top level node, or at least the object controlling it is the top level node in the hierarchy. So I'm actually just going to take the spine, because if my pelvis moves, the spine has to follow it. I'm going to alt drag and drop that transform uh, group null onto my pelvis root. So by moving that root, we can move the whole uh, skeleton around. So my whole character is parented together now, uh, at least on the left side. If you wanted to, you could organize this hierarchy into something that's a little bit more visual, but in this sense we can see pretty clearly the descendants 
and, and how they work in terms of importance.